Mexico and Wallawa County are evacuating tonight because of a wildfire in the area. Welcome to KGW News at 5. I'm Christelle Kumwe. Governor Kate Brown evoked the Emergency Conflagration Act in response to the Double Creek Fire, which has burned 10,000 acres so far. Brown's declaration allows the Office of the State Fire Marshal to take unified commands. Governor Brown saying, quote, the Double Creek Fire grew rapidly overnight, requiring additional resources to battle the fire and support the state's response. The Wallawa County Sheriff's Office has also issued evacuation orders for homes near the fire. Right now, there are 40 active fires across more than 44,000 acres in Oregon. The largest is the Rum Creek Fire burning across 18,000 acres in southern Oregon. Crews face strong winds on Friday with gusts reaching up to 25 miles per hour. But the good news is they've made some progress. The fire is 17 percent contained right now, and that's up 5 percent from yesterday. And I'm meteorologist Joe Ranieri is joining us. And Joe, you've also been following these fires. And some areas are have red flag warnings. That's right. There's yeah. also the air quality alert that's going to be in fact not through here in the metro area, but the more east to go and throughout the southern part of the state, we will be seeing that in place here over the next uh, 24 to 48 hours. So I you know a lot of people are hoping to spend some time outside. Yeah, you're going to be noticing uh, some smoky and hazy conditions over the next couple of days uh, through parts of the high desert. I'll get to that in a second, but I want to talk about some of the alerts that we have. You have that air quality warning that's in place until tomorrow afternoon through parts of Ben. That's basically where you see the gray is throughout central Oregon, southern Oregon, even through parts of eastern Oregon as well. Meanwhile, the red color you see is a fire danger warning. Red flag warning is in place throughout parts of the southeast side of the state. And if you look at the visible satellite imagery, if you look right here, these are some of the fires that we're seeing from our maps. Now, the smoke is so thick, it's picking up on our satellite imagery. That's also the case down near Medford, where the state's largest wildfire is burning. It's been burning for over a week now. That's the Rum Creek fire. But as we look at some of the fires across the Pacific Northwest, it's definitely been pretty active here over the last uh, seven to 10 days or so. Now, as we look at the winds, winds won't be much of a factor throughout parts of the valley in the metro area, but they'll definitely be picking up here over the next couple of days throughout parts of the Columbia River Gorge, especially throughout the east end of the gorge near the Dalles, uh, gusts up to about 25 to 30 miles per hour heading into tomorrow. The other thing I was telling you about is the air quality. It's going to suffer through parts of the southern part of the state. You can see it's going to be unhealthy in a few locations, also picking up some oranges and some reds throughout eastern Oregon as well. So if you're going to be in this area over the next couple of days, be aware that smoke is going to be thick. As we put this into the motion, you can kind of see where that smoke is really going to be really uh, kind of dangerous for a few of you throughout the central and eastern side of the state. We could get some light, smoky and hazy conditions over the next couple of days at times, but for the most part, that smoke is going to be situated on the east side of the state. And coming up in my detailed forecast, Chris, I'll, I'll talk more about the rest of your holiday weekend and what we can expect to see heading into tomorrow and on Labor Day. Sounds good. Thanks, Joe. Tonight, we have a call to action from the Portland Firefighters Association. They say because of staffing shortages, the city is forcing firefighters to work mandatory overtime or face disciplinary action. This has been happening for the last two years, and now the firefighters union is asking the city to pay them double time instead of time and a half for those extra shifts. Meanwhile, a new study shows Portland Fire is severely understaffed, and that lack of resources is significantly impacting response times. The study was commissioned by the fire department, but done by an independent firm. Right now, the city is down 30 firefighters with more about to retire. And we are recruiting people. We have people in training right now that are that are uh, going to come out. But we are because we're behind so far. Even if they were to recruit and hire people, we're still going to be in a hole for maybe one to two more years. The firefighters union is asking the city for permanent funding for 60 more full time positions and an additional station in southeast Portland. Multnomah County Sheriff deputies are investigating a shooting that happened outside the Wood Village Fred Meyer on Friday. The store in question is on Northeast 223rd and Gleason. Witnesses say around 4.30 p.m., two men began shooting at each other. One was standing in the parking lot. The other was by the store's front entrance. Evidence markers show bullet casings in the parking lot. You can also see where bullets shattered the glass door. Out of nowhere, we hear shots. I look outside, there's a guy, there was a car parked. He was behind the car with his hand over his head, shooting randomly towards Fred Meyer. 
there was another guy like in the center of Admire uh, shooting back. The sheriff's office says it detained one person of interest but haven't made any arrests. No injuries have so far been reported. Now to an update on the cab driver who was shot Thursday morning on I-205. The suspect, 47-year-old Bradley Dylan Stanwood, appeared in court Friday afternoon to face multiple charges, including attempted murder. Police say two bullets hit the taxi near the Gleason Street exit. One went through the tailgate, the back seat, and then the driver's seat. Prosecutors believe the motive was road rage, but Stanwood's lawyer says this is a case of mistaken identity. The um, car that he was driving, when you let off the accelerator, it backfires, pop, 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 pop. I think he was mistaken for someone else. The judge set the bell at $100,000 with Stanwood due back in court later this month. The cab driver, who police say called 911 with the plate number of the suspect vehicle, is recovering in the hospital. This summer, a single mother in Beaverton got a life-altering and unexpected diagnosis. She had breast cancer. On top of that, the bills were going up too much for her family to maintain. That's when she reached out to Michelle's Love, a local organization that provided some help and stability in these tough times. Alan McCarty has the story. Even under the best of circumstances, most everyone can agree it's a pain to move. <laughs> Tell you what, for us is a huge burden off of my shoulders. So when someone steps in to lighten the load, it's a relief. And for Veronica Sandoval Arriaga, it's a blessing. To be very honest with you, I have not had a chance to really process everything. Um, my life has, in the last three years, it's been a super difficult road for me and my children. I mean, I don't mean to cry, but anyways, it's, it's been super hard on us. Less than two months ago, Veronica was diagnosed with breast cancer. I was very unexpected, uh, very traumatizing. With an upcoming mastectomy and reconstruction surgery, she won't be able to work for a while as a caregiver at Providence St. Vincent. And with rent going up and the landlord thinking about selling the home by the end of the year, she decided it was best to relocate her family from Beaverton to Tiger. And that's when Michelle's love stepped in. We provide meals, house cleanings, and pay bills for single parents undergoing treatment for cancer. After her best friend, Michelle, lost her battle with cancer, Andy McCandless founded the nonprofit. Uh, watching her be sick and watching her needs, the most important thing she needed was money. You know, people, it's hard to ask for money. It's the hardest thing in the world to do. To date, the group has helped 167 families. Just this year, they've provided more than $53,000 in rent and mortgage payments. Andy says Michelle's love will help pay three months rent for Veronica, in addition to helping her move. We'll have her moved in less than two hours from start to finish from her new place, and we'll have her rent paid, and she'll have dinner on the table tonight. Volunteers jumped at the chance to assist. And within 24 hours, we had 17 people signed up. We had to start turning people away. Now moved into their new apartment, Veronica and her family can rest easier. Part of their financial burden relief. I am so thankful that there is such a program to help these women who probably go through worse than I am at this moment and to be in such good hands with Andy and her foundation is amazing and I've been very fortunate and loved tremendously that I'm so thankful, so grateful for everything. As of now, after undergoing surgery, Veronica will not need chemo or radiation. She tells me this assistance is helping her stay strong for her kids. To find out more about Michelle's love and how you can help families like Veronica's, head to our website. A celebration of culture is happening in Portland tonight. As you can see, dozens of people showed up for the Ukrainian Day PDX in Westmoreland Park. Visitor, visitors enjoyed live music, traditional dancing, and Ukrainian food. We like to have fun here. We like to have people to know who is Ukrainian, uh, meet people, uh, find out who these brave people who stand for Europe, maybe for whole world. 
Organizers say all the profit made tonight will be donated to medical and military safety equipment for Ukraine. The event ends in about two hours at 7 p.m.